I would like especially to thank Zika Jovanovic and all the organizers for giving the possibility to be again with you after a few years. And I would like to express, just as did Ramsey now, my emotion being with you. I remember arriving here in the night, 99. It was supposed to be the spring, it was the hell. And I remember being with you, first night, a bombing, it was a hospital. We went to visit the victims the, day, the morning after. And then I remember walking in Kalemegdan and the, bo the airplanes were heard and everybody was continuing his life as if normal. This was for me a great experience, a great demonstration of resistance and an inspiration for so many difficult years. I remember being here also in 2000 in a very sad confusion after the so-called elections that should be called CIA coup and that was also a lesson bitter but important so very important lessons can be taken from the aggression against your country as Mr. Javier Solana himself said, the experience acquired in Bosnia will serve as a model for future NATO operations. Will serve as a model for future NATO operations. So they knew very well what they were doing. They knew that the war against Yugoslavia was only a chapter in a global war. It's, nothing, it's not something isolated. It's a chapter in a global war of recolonization of the world with a key momentum, 89-90, deciding to recolonize what had been lost by the empire. And as it was explained by General Galois and other speakers, this was a preparation of the attack against Iraq, against Afghanistan, and also a lot of undeclared wars. Remember, 89, some speaking about the end of history. Well, the end of history, the supreme victory of Western capitalism didn't last long. It took a short time to unchain an orgy of neoliberalism of privatizations and a big crisis. So where is the victory of capitalism? In Latin America, where I have been many times the last years preparing a book about Chavez, 44% of the people live under the level of poverty. 44%, one dollar each day. Even worse in Africa. Where's the victory of capitalism? And it's very sad to see Yugoslavia, excuse me if I'm still calling it Yugoslavia, to see Yugoslavia in all its paths now to rush to neoliberalism while it is a complete failure in all over the world and people don't want it anymore. In Latin America, speak about neoliberalism, you will hear. And this orgy of neoliberalism was expressed by Bush himself, of course, and once it appeared that the aggressive mood of Bush was a sign of force. Well, not. It was a sign of weakness. It was a sign that the rule of the empire could not be prevailing without aggressions, but Bush was defeated. 
all the US bourgeoisie knows Bush is a complete failure. He provoked resistance and resistance all over the world, in Asia, in Africa, in the Middle East, and especially in Latin America. As I said, Chavez is a very interesting, significant figure now, because he's doing exactly the contrary of everything that was told to us. Capitalism, you cannot escape to it, that's the solution, you have to adapt. Well, he's showing no. The money of oil can be used for something else than bringing the fat actionaries of Exxon and BP and Shell richer and richer. It can be used to bring education to the people, healthcare to the people, and a future and a decent job and a hope. Well, Chavez, I guess is really somebody very important. And it's not about Chavez, it's about all the people of Latin America who found a hero, but the hero without the people is nothing. Of course, Chavez is demonized, and in this country, I don't need to explain what is to demonize a leader or a people. But he's very strong. I mean, he has a strong popular support, including among the youth. And because he's bringing social progress, he's bringing a future for the poor people. And then the empire has to try to divide and use the same methods to break that. I have made a prologue to a very good book of a U.S. US lawyer, Eva Gollinger, about Venezuela, and she's showing with the documents all the, the proofs of the coup against Chavez in 2002, which failed because of the popular support. And that's very interesting to, to compare, and the book is showing the names of the people, the name of the so-called NGOs and the organization, even the money that was used by the CIA to prepare this coup d'etat. What is interesting is you find the same people. For example, Philip Goldberg was a very well-known CIA agent in this region. He was ambassador, he was envoy in Kosovo. He was very important in provo provoking the separatism. Well, where is he now? Ambassador in Bolivia manipulating the same kind of things. But he was expelled by Evo. Good job. So the lessons are useful. And this is a good title for this meeting, not to forget, never forget. But there is something even more important, is to learn about it and to make these lessons useful. Will Obama be different? Well, we have to learn from who is inspiring his strategy. The man, be the man behind Obama, his name is Bigniew Brzezinski, and is the key strategist in the US. Well, he was also behind Clinton. And the whole idea of Brzezinski, different in strategy and tactics from Bush, is smart imperialism. Brzezinski is the man who has financed and organized Bin Laden to provoke the war in Afghanistan and to prepare the failure of the Soviet Union. The idea of Brzezinski is less direct wars and more indirect wars. More corruption, more CIA coup, more of that kind of strategy and, if possible, in alliance with Europe and, of course, with more suitable media lies. So the lessons of Yugoslavia are crucial. They are very uncertain. And they are not only for you. The lessons of what happened here is not a question of the past. It's a question of the present. And it's a question of how will it be useful for the people of the world who are facing the same challenges. I used to say Always, wars do not start with bombs, they start with media lies. The war of information is the first part and the preparation of the war itself.